Hello, everyone. Today, I'll be discussing uh, a condition that seems to be affecting a lot of individuals across India these days called dengue fever. Now, even though it is spelt D-E-N-G-U-E, the condition is pronounced as dengue. So we'll be discussing briefly what dengue fever is, how it is caused, how it can be investigated, treated, and how you can prevent dengue fever. To start off with, what is dengue? Dengue is a viral infection. Like any other viral infections we have, dengue is also a viral infection. And there are four different kinds of dengue viruses that cause dengue fever the DENV1, 2, 3, and 4. This is what the dengue fever virus looks like on um, uh, electron, mi electron microscopy. So how does dengue f uh, fever spread? It spreads through the infected Aedes mosquito. And uh, we have a picture of the mosquito here in the top right-hand corner. The mosquito has a striped body, uh, as you can clearly see there. And so it is sometimes called as a tiger mosquito. Typically, this mosquito bites during the day, usually about two hours after sunrise and around two hours before sunset. The only time the mosquito is only alive for about two weeks, and during this time, it has three cycles of egg laying and can lay over about 100 eggs during that period. So once a human is bitten, it can take about five to six days for the dengue fever to develop. Some interesting facts. Uh, dengue is spread by the female Aedes mosquito, not the male one, as the female one requires blood to feed its eggs. After biting an infected person, it takes about seven days for the mosquito to be able to transmit the disease. The mosquito eggs also carry the virus, and these are actually very resilient eggs. They can withstand scorching heats. Temperatures are quite high in India these days, and even they can survive without water for months. And typically, the Aedes mosquito likes dark corners. So what are the clinical features? The first symptom that patients come with is sudden onset of fever. Now, they may be very well in the morning, but may notice fever later on in the evening. The temperature crosses 100 degrees usually, and the total duration of fever is anywhere between two to seven days, though often by the fourth or fifth day, the fever starts to settle down. Some of the associated features with the fever include headache behind the eyes, muscle and joint pains, back pain, usually low back pain, Sometimes a rash may be present, but this is seen on the third or fourth day or maybe a little later. And rarely is there bleeding from the gums and nose, and sometimes they're bruising on the skin. One of the other common symptoms that patients complain of is fatigue and tiredness, and many of them also have nausea and vomiting. So how is dengue fever diagnosed? A simple blood test is sufficient, and in the first five days, the NS1 antigen test is positive. This is very simple to perform. Just a drop of blood is placed on a slide and it is read in about 10 minutes. The report you'll get within no time at all. And that can detect whether the dengue vi virus is present within your bloodstream. Now, in those who have had fever for more than five days, that NS1 test may not be as sensitive. And in such patients, an antibody test may be required or may be more appropriate. You may have seen your blood reports. They'll have an NS1, an immunoglobulin G, and an immunoglobulin M. The IgG and IgM are seen later on. IgM is seen before IgG is seen in the blood. Another important test is the platelet count. Now, normal platelet count lasts is between 1.5 to 4 lakhs. And the platelet count is low if it is below 1.5 lakhs. In dengue fever, it can drop well below 1 lakh, sometimes to the tune of 10 to 20,000 as well. So it is important that platelet counts are monitored on a regular basis or advised by your doctor. Now, the thickness of the blood may increase in dengue fever, and this is reflected in a blood parameter called the hematocrit. You may see this in your report, sometimes it's HCT or PCV. A higher hematocrit means the blood is thicker. Abnormal liver function tests are also seen. These usually resolve by itself. Typically, the SGOT and SGPT, or sometimes called the AST and ALT, may be elevated. Usually they resolve within a few days or sometimes patients may require liver enzymes to help reduce the values. Other tests include a chest x-ray and an ultrasound abdomen. These are only required if there is suspicion of fluid in the chest or if the abdominal pain is quite severe. So how is dengue fever treated? 
it is very simple complete bed rest is the most important thing and most patients can be managed at home we strongly advise patients uh, against going to work or even doing their day to day activities uh, such as cooking cleaning etc because bed rest is important in the early stages those who don't take bed rest early may find that they're excessively fatigued later on and the recovery periods may be a little bit longer the safest drug to get, take uh, to take for fever is paracetamol we typically avoid aspirin and ibuprofen as it can increase the risk of gastritis and vomiting not only that these drugs also have an effect on the platelet count so it is better to avoid these two drugs completely if the fever is very high and it is not settling with paracetamol alone cold sponging may be need, uh, may be needed uh, fluid intake needs to be increased um, this is because dehydration can set in quite early in the dengue fever we advise uh, taking oral rehydration solutions tender coconut water or even simple water is sufficient follow a healthy diet avoid eating outside keep spice and oily food limited and when of course when of course you have fever make sure you go and see your doctor don't delay it too long now certain points about the treatment as i mentioned previously there will be a high fever to the tune of over 100 up to 104 105 we have seen as well um this fever causes sweating and vomiting as well and this can cause a loss of a lot of fluids and salts so it is important to take plenty of fluids you should be passing very clear urine if you're passing yellowish urine it means your fluid intake is insufficient oral rehydration solutions i that is ors and homemade juices are very good and it is important to assess signs of dehydration time and again and a simple ways to do that is looking to see if your tongue is dry if the urination is reduced if there are sunken eyes drowsiness and confusion that may be noted by family members or friends and the presence of cold hands and feet blood tests may be required more often than usual especially if the platelet count is low uh, you may require a platelet count in the morning and in the evening just to see if the drop is significant now in advanced cases where the platelet counts are very low patients may require a platelet transfusion that is done in the hospital but platelets have a very short life span they may not help much in recovery but they may help in reducing the risk of bleeding in the short term any bleeding needs urgent treatment especially if there is bleeding from the stomach or the bowels now the total recovery time in dengue fever is anywhere between 1 to 2 weeks so it may take a little bit longer uh, especially the fatigue and tiredness may persist for up to a month and we have seen patients having this sort of fatigue for up to 3 months as well some important points regarding dengue uh, the most important time in dengue fever is actually 3 to 5 days after the fever has subsided and this is because the blood vessels are, there is a small capillaries that are present in your skin they become most more permeable and fluid starts to leak out of this it starts to accumulate into the, under the skin and around the organs and the blood pressure can reduce as a result so in this stage if the blood pressure is low patients may require admission for intravenous fluids very importantly you may have a mild fever which may be due to dengue and you may not have any other symptoms so you may not realize that you're suffering from dengue fever so in such a situation it is important that testing is performed so any patient who comes to our clinic during the season uh, of dengue who has high fever we always perform a dengue test to ensure they don't have the problem is dengue fatal well this is a very common question asked and reassuringly it is rare though there are cases that progress on to a condition known as dengue hemorrhagic syndrome or dengue shock syndrome in these two conditions there is excessive bleeding from different orifices uh, orifices from the nose from the gut from the bowels anywhere it may occur and the blood pressure drops and when the blood pressure drops it becomes dengue shock syndrome the risk of these complications is higher in infants and in children and if treated aggressively and early lives can be saved so when do you call your doctor urgently if you have severe abdominal pain continuous vomiting if you notice blood in your vomiting and your stools especially if it is red bright red blood or your stools are black in color if you are drowsy or confused or somebody notices that you, that is a case if you have difficulty breathing or if you have cold and clammy skin then it's important you call your doctor as soon as you can how do you prevent dengue well wear full, full sleeve clothes and cover as much of your body especially when going out use mosquito repellents creams and aerosols are very useful avoid stagnant water near and around your house using mosquito nets and meshes 
on open windows and doors is important. So thank you for your time and for listening to this small discussion on dengue fever. If you have any questions, I would appreciate it if you could leave it in the comments below. And so we, maybe we can have a good discussion regarding the problem. And when you get time, please do visit our Facebook page. We have two Facebook pages, one on heart sense and one on Baliga Diagnostics. There are two websites you can visit for more information. And do visit our YouTube channel and subscribe to it for latest updates on health and heart disease. Thank you very much.